Hey everybody, John Wagdon here with Dev Central, and we are bringing you another Lightboard lesson video. And today, we're going to talk about a recent network attack and what happened and how we came in and mitigated the attack and made everything better. So uh, I just wanted to say a quick word about our F5 Security Operations Center, or our SOC, and uh, the great work that they do. They, they, uh, they see a lot of attacks happen every day. They go in there, they do great things and uh, mitigate those attacks. And I wanted to highlight one that we uh, saw recently. Um, so there was a, uh, this email provider out there uh, that provides email services. So I'll, uh, I'll just put email provider over here. And this is, uh, this is a, a provider where you, know, you can go and get email services. They'll give you an email address. You can send and receive emails. You know? So it's a pretty uh, straightforward kind of thing. Uh, they do a great job with what they do. But the nature of how they have their infrastructure configured is they have a lot of different web servers that have a lot of different services uh, enabled on those. So you know, they may have HTTP enabled, um, SMTP, and I'll just, you know, I'll just put maybe dot, 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 a whole bunch of these kinds of things. Um, you know, FTP, NTP, whatever, all kinds of different services that they would, that they would need to do what they do to, not, to provide um, email services to their customers and also just keep their infrastructure up and running. All right, so what happened was you had these bad guys that, uh, that had a lot of spoofed IP addresses. So I'll put spoofed IP address boxes, and this was like a you know, think of like a botnet, all these, you know, boxes that are compromised that, uh, that these attackers have control over. And they said, all right, we're going to flood this email provider with a DDoS attack. And so they did. So all these different spoofed IP addresses from all these different boxes started to flood the uh, email provider um, with all these DDoS attack uh, vectors, is what I'll call them, just these attack methods. Um, one of the interesting things about this attack is that the attack types were all something that we, we being like the, the SOC, uh, have seen before. So it wasn't like, a, oh, hey, we've never seen that type of a DDoS attack or that type of a network attack before. Every single thing that they use, we've seen before. Um, one of the interesting other things is that they didn't just use one attack. So they used a, uh, uh, several different amplification attacks, which if you know anything about amp amplification attacks, that's essentially where a, uh, a client will send a, re or a, a, a request to the server, and then the server's response is going to be much, much larger in size than the request was. So an amplification attack is these little bitty requests that cause these back-end servers to do a lot of work to respond properly. Um, so they sent amplification attacks. Uh, there were different TCP floods. There were different uh, types of attacks that they used, again, that we've all seen before. Um, and so on one hand, it's like, okay, that's, that's stuff that we could mitigate because we've seen that before. Um, but on the other hand, there was a lot of different, you know, types of attacks coming in. And beyond that, they didn't just attack one service. So it wasn't just against HTTP or just against SMTP or FTP or whatever. They attacked all these different services. So there was a lot of attacks coming in at a lot of different services. So just stuff going on all over the place, you know. Um, so most of it, like I said, was stuff we had seen before and we were able to, uh, to stop. Uh, but there was one that was interesting. Specifically, it was a uh, TCP, um, TCP flood attack vector. And specifically in this, it was a push ack attack. All righty, so really quick on this, uh, a push is a flag that you can enable on in TCP messages uh, that basically says, hey, when I'm sending a TCP message, uh, the way that TCP works is that the receiver of TCP messages will wait and hold those in a buffer so that when the buffer is full, then they will go ahead and process the TCP request. Um, but before the buffer's full, they're just going to sit there and wait on the rest of it to fill up so that then they, they process everything you know, in, in chunks uh, that they need to rather than just doing every little bitty thing that comes in along the way. However, the push flag, if that is enabled from the sender, the sender is essentially saying, hey, receiver, don't wait for that buffer to fill up. Go ahead and process the, this request like right away. And so that takes additional 
uh, compute power on the server because the server's like, all right, I got I to I go ahead and process this. And the next one comes in with a push flag enabled. I, I got to process that. So I'm just processing all kinds of TCP messages here. Um, so beyond that, the ACK flag is another flag in TCP where that says, hey, once you do something, I need, I being the sender, need acknowledgement that you did that thing. So this is the acknowledgement that the receiver actually completed the thing that was asked for. All right, so when all of these, um, when all of these, you know, machines, these bot machines, as it were, were sending all these messages uh, to all these different services, uh, specifically this TCP flood attack with this push ACK um, attack was making all of these different servers, uh, you know, go ahead and process requests and acknowledge that they were processing the request. Um, and a lot of times what you can do when these different attacks start happening, these flood attacks or amplification attacks or whatever, you'll start to see some patterns emerge where maybe um, in the case of like a TCP flood, you'll see that uh, header information that should be changing is not changing. It's, it just stays static. And that's kind of a telltale sign that it's like, all right, that's probably an attacker because the things that should be changing are not changing. Or maybe there's some sequencing numbers that should be changing, should, should be incrementing, that are not incrementing. So that's another sign that it's like, hey, that's probably an attacker. Um, so there's some things that you can start to pick out. The interesting thing about this one specific attack, you know, that was involved in this overall attack, is that these uh, TCP messages uh, is what we'll call well-formed packets. They were, they were actually designed appropriately. The header information actually did change like it was supposed to. The sequencing numbers did increment the way that they were supposed to. So it made it uh, a lot more difficult to pick these out and say, hey, um, which one is the legitimate traffic and which one is a malicious, uh, you know, which one's the malicious traffic. So, um, but our, our F5 SOC, and, and specifically within the SOC, they used um, uh, these F5 Silverline services. That's our, uh, we've got We've got uh, web application firewall services and DDoS protection services within our Silverline uh, product offering, services offering. Uh, and we'll, we'll link to more of that so you can find out more about Silverline, by the way. Uh, but they used Silverline and they came in and they said, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna get in front of this email provider and we're gonna put F5 here. Um, and then this is, this is the Silverline as well. I'll just put Silverline here, Silverline. That's an R, Silverline. All right, so Silverline services in front. They, uh, they were able to formulate a mitigation plan for the entire network for this email provider. One of the interesting things, too, on this is that we were not, uh, we, we did not have a relationship with this customer prior to this attack. So we had to come in. They called us up and said, hey, we're getting attacked, like, bad. Can you guys come and help? And we were like, of course we can come and help. Um, so we show up, we say, hey, we need to get an idea of what your network looks like. We've never seen this thing before, the network that is. And so we need to get a feel for it. And they found pretty quickly that because so many different services were being attacked by so, so many different attack vectors, they said, we need to, we need to formulate a mitigation plan uh, or countermeasures for your entire network. Uh, and then beyond that, we need to figure out which services are extremely critical to keep up and which ones are okay in the heat of the moment, as it were, to let go down if they have to. So we worked with the customer, we prioritized that list, we kept everything up and running that needed to, uh, so that the actual legitimate um, you know, users that this customer services, uh, that their services, their email services never fully went down. They slowed down a little bit, um, but they never went down. And we were able to mitigate the attack, stop the attackers from bombarding uh, this email provider with all their different crazy attacks. And then, uh, and then the attack went down and then everything, everything over here came back up and everybody was good to go. Um, one interesting thing as well is that when that happened, then these attackers noticed that F5 uh, was put in front of this email provider and they noticed that. And then they got, um, I'm going to say they got mad at F5 because they said, hey, we're trying to attack this guy and you guys are blocking us. So now we're mad at you. So they came after F5 also. They started attacking F5 with a DDoS attack. Um, that it didn't work because we knew, uh, you know, we knew their attack vector. We knew exactly what they were doing to these guys. And if we could stop it for them, of course, we could stop it for us. So we stopped it and it never affected F5. Um, which, by the way, at the, at the peak of the attack, there was about a 26 gigabit per second um, 
flood, you know, volumetric attack. That's man, they're just trying to fill up um, as much of the bandwidth pipe as they possibly can, so as to you know, so as to to block out legitimate traffic. Uh, like I said, they didn't take the thing completely down, uh, but they did slow things down quite a bit. Uh, one one thing that I would mention as well, like I said, we came in uh, kind of cold, as it were, to this customer, and we had to kind of figure out, hey, let me get the lay of the land on this thing, figure out what's going on. Uh, one thing that I would uh, that I'd recommend on the heels of this is that um, wh whoever your defense provider is, work with them to figure out countermeasures, uh, ideally before an attack takes place. And by that I mean, let's say that they let's say that these attackers, um, you know, are coming after the HTTP protocol, for example. Then you may have a countermeasure for that, uh, but you want to test that thing. And you want to say, hey, does our countermeasure for this one service uh, knock out anything else for another service? Uh, so, like, for example, if you establish an awesome countermeasure for, like, an HTTP layer attack, but you figure out in testing that that countermeasure um, maybe messes up your DNS services or something like that, well, then that's not good and you want to figure that out. So, you want to, you want to lay, lay all that out before an attack happens, and that's where the customer and, this, and the, uh, you know, the uh, provider here for your DDoS defense uh, can work together to, to make sure all that happens. So, uh, so anyway, so that's, that's important stuff. And the other thing, like I said, whenever, they, whenever these attackers turned and started attacking F5, whoever your defense uh, provider is, make sure they can withstand a DDoS attack too. That's a pretty important thing. So uh, if, they, if in the midst of them helping you, they themselves go down, that's not a good thing. So make sure they can handle all that stuff. So, uh, so anyway, so that's a, that's a quick overview of the, uh, the attack that happened here on this email provider and how F5 came in, saved the day, everybody's happy, except for the attackers because they uh, ultimately they did not prevail in this thing. They were trying to take this stuff down and it didn't work. So, uh, so it's good stuff. Um, so thanks for hanging in there with us today on this Lightboard lesson video. Uh, and we'll continue to bring you more of these uh, of these attacks and you know real world scenarios. It's pretty uh, pretty cool, pretty interesting stuff. So so again, thanks for hanging in there. Hey, if you like this, you can click right up here on our DC ball and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.